everybody, this is Neil with Catalyst Machine Works, and uh, I want to start off uh, by apologizing for my voice. It sounds terrible. Um, I had the flu, and somehow that turned into pneumonia, And uh, but luckily, I'm on the mend now, and I've been taking antibiotics, and I, I actually feel pretty good today. I feel actually really good, uh, especially compared to where I was, but my voice hadn't caught up yet, so... I sound, I sound pretty bad. But anyways, uh, moving away from that, and uh, I want to talk about this guy that I've got on the screen. What is this thing? This is the new version. This is the version 2 of the, uh, of the Speed Attic 210R. So our popular freestyle frame um, that we have been selling for a while now. Uh, freestyle and racing frame. Um, this one is what we're doing with this is we're really attacking the freestyle market. Okay. So we, throughout the, well, it's at least been a year now that we've been selling this guy, the version one, uh, you know, we've been flying them and listening to our team pilots and listening to customers and, uh, writing all that stuff down as we go. And this new version is a, is a culmination of all of that. So we've taken all of the input. And we've applied it into this system and vastly improved it, or we think so. Um, so let me discuss some of the major changes between the old one and the new one. All right. So, uh, all right. So let me get you let you get a, a better look at this uh, new version. Kind of spin it around a little bit. I'm sure many of you will immediately pick up on some of the uh, major changes here, um, and then. I will go look at the old version. I should call it the current version. All right, so here it is. All right now, it's got the uh, arm braces, the optional arm braces on it, of course. But here it is. All right. Now, one of the major changes is the removal of this PDB bay, all right? So you guys who are flying this, you're, you're familiar with this thing. And what this is, is an area to house the power distribution board. Um, technology has been upgraded now, um, has changed on us. And as you know, in this industry, it, it seems to change every other week. You know, there's some new thing coming out, but it's a good thing. So um, now, instead of using pins, so this was designed in a time when Everybody, or most people, were using, um, were using pins to go and solder to the power distribution board and the flight controller. Well, most people have moved away from that now, and everybody just directs solders to the, uh, the flight controller and the power distribution board. It allows you to have a much tighter stack. You don't have to go as tall. Um, and so at, when that happened, this bay in here became sort of kind of useless in a way. Uh, you didn't really need it. It's just extra complexity, cost, and weight. So we got rid of that. All right. We streamlined this guy quite a bit. Um, what it did is it increased the durability. It reduced cost on my end so I can get you guys a, a less expensive price for the end product. Um, and uh, it lightens it up. Right. So this guy's lighter. Um, speaking of weight, all right, this is only going to come in a four millimeter bottom plate thickness. That's the only option that you'll have. The this frame, as it sits, is lighter than the three millimeter version of this one, right? So it sits right at a hundred grams is where this guy's at. So it's losing uh, quite a bit of weight. All right, so the next thing, let's see how much time I've got. I'm almost out. Um, the next thing is the carbon fiber itself. <coughs> Excuse me. The carbon fiber has been changed and updated from uh, the gloss type that we've been using over to a nice matte finish. And also, it is a, a more durable um, carbon fiber. All right, so crash testing has shown us that it's uh, it's a little more flexible. Um, it's not quite as brittle. All right, so uh, one of the other big changes that we made 
is to the FPV camera cage. So here in the front where the camera is housed, we change the side plates um, over from this type, this type here, you can see that geometry there, over to this. Um, some of you guys who fly the Superlight line will recognize this. This actually the exact same geometry as the Superlight camera plates. So what that allows us to do is to offer the same optional camera plates and whatnot that we have with the Superlight line over on this machine as well. So they're going to be using the exact same camera plates. Next, this standard camera plate that's going to come in the kit is going to move from a slot over to a slot that has these little sort of indentions in it. Uh, these little, these little, little semicircles, I'll call them. And uh, what this allows you to do is instead of sort of guessing what angle your camera's at, if you know the starting point, which I believe this is 25 degrees minimum, um, these are five degree increments. So you can count how far you've gone past 25 and know exactly where your camera's at. Also, um, what I've done here as well is taken and increased substantially the maximum camera angle. So before it was like 45 degrees with the stock camera plates. Now you can go to something like 70 or 75 degrees. I don't know, you know, if anybody will ever actually use that, <laughs> but if there's any insane people out there, you know, it's there if you want to use it. Um, also, okay, this is pretty neat, is when designing these, uh, these cameras, you know, uh, mounting systems, there's, it, it's hard to account for every different kind of camera out there. And unfortunately, you know, Run Cam Fox here, every time they come out with a new camera, they change their design. So it makes it hard on, you know, frame designers because they're always changing things up. You, ever, you can't ever catch up to them. And you can't ever, you know, tell the future and figure out what they're going to, which way they're going to go. So what I did, oh, we got some rain going on outside. What I did is included into the bottom plate these slots. And so if you've got a camera that just won't fit in, you know, using these camera side plates, you can get rid of these side plates and then you can use the included mount that comes with your camera and attach it to this frame. So that's a neat feature. All right, let's move to the rear of the system. The rear of the system we have updated uh, quite a bit. All right, so let me zoom in. My computer's being a little slow today. Uh, let me zoom in on the ass end. And let's look at the, the butt or the ass or the rear end, however you want to refer to it, of the old system. Okay, so the way the old system worked is there's a little hole in this top plate and you use a right angle uh, SMA to go up to your FPV antenna. And it works fine. However, what happens when you crash is that sometimes you're going to hit this FPV antenna. It puts a, a moment or a torque on this assembly and it can actually crack the carbon fiber right here. All right, so we resolve that by going to this setup. So what we have here is a TPU 3D printed bulkhead, right? And this has got a hole in it. And then your SMA, you can use a right angle, you can use a straight uh, SMA. You don't even have to have a. This is a pigtail type. The wire is not here because it's hard to model up a wire, but um, you could imagine there's a wire here. You don't have to use a pigtail type SMA. You could also run, you know, just a regular uh, a, a video transmitter that doesn't even have a pigtail. Uh, that just has a, a connection coming right off the, the video transmitter. All right, and so the reason for the bulkhead is it allows us to project uh, the FPV antenna straight out the back. And we have nested, or we've kind of recessed, rather, um, the bulk of the assembly here um, in the inside of the frame. 
And then this part, of course, is flexible. So what you do is you take a zip tie through these, through these little slots around the uh, antenna. Then you take another one through these slots and around the antenna. And you cinch that up. Then there's this little protrusion that's connected to the same bulkhead. This is all one part. This part uh, here is all one part. And so this is, once you tighten it all up and get the zip ties all tightened up, this is a stress reliever for this FBV antenna. So you're going to be very, very hard pressed to break, for one, the, uh, the top plate. It's, it's just not going to happen. Uh, and then you're, you're going to have a very resilient FPV antenna assembly here. Um, next, we took and we changed over the uh, RX antenna mount over to this style that exits the, the rear of the craft. Okay, so another big change that we made is to the geometry of the bottom plate. Let me open it up so we can have a look. All right, so here's the geometry of the bottom plate. And let me go open up the geometry of the old bottom plate. And let's compare the two. Boy, it is really raining right now outside. Came out of nowhere. All right, so here is kind of burn this one into your memory. See what it looks like? You got a massive hole. Uh, this is what the uh, pads look like, arms, blah, blah, blah. And then let's go look at the new one. All right, so here's the new one. And so what we did is this geometry that we've got right here mimics the new super light six inch. So it's the same pad. Um, it's actually the exact same geometry. Um, and the way that the arms, the geometry on the arms also mimics that. Um, it's a lot to go into, but uh, it's just let's just say that it's uh, more it's more crash durable. Uh, we'll put it that way. Um, the next thing is if you look at the old plate, because we have this big hole here, we had to move material out, you know, to keep this thing from from disintegrating on a crash. We had to have some material here. That puts material, having material here, puts material in the line of thrust. Um, and so aerodynamics are compromised in that scenario. With this one, right, you have less material here. So you have better aerodynamics. The arms are a little more narrow where they don't need as much material. Right? So that helped us with some uh, weight savings. And also helps with aerodynamics, assuming you don't have a big old speed controller on here. All right, so that's the two bottom plates. Let's close those out. Okay, now we'll talk about some of the uh, smaller changes to this guy. All right, one of the small changes is we got rid of the uh, slots. So there were slots here on either side of the top plate for running the Velcro through. Uh, we found out through experience and uh, flying these, this uh, machine all the time that if you ever end up breaking your, your strap, it's kind of a pain to get it through these little slots. Um, so it's just easier to be able to just run it through and then, you know, and then cinch it down if you have to replace that out in the field. The next thing that we did is we moved the uh, flight controller pattern forward a little bit away from these two rear standoffs. One of the problems that we had with the old system, I should say the current system, I've already, I've already mentally moved into the new, the new version here. Um, come on computer. Okay, you can see the proximity of the flight controller in reference to the rear standoffs. If you have one of these new all-in-one type flight controllers or ESCs, ESC combos or whatever, um, some of these don't have a 36 millimeter by 36 millimeter form factor. They're bigger. You know, they got stuff going all over the place. They're, they're, they're weird shapes now. And so some of the stuff won't fit in the current uh, 210R. With this one, you can see that I've moved it up quite a bit. So I've got lots of space between the edge 
you know, of the flight controller and the front standoffs and the edge of flight controller and the rear standoffs, which is nice. Um, additionally, what we did is we took the location of the, uh, of the straps and of the, of the Velcro strap that holds the battery down and we moved it back a little bit. All right. So I don't know if, if this is a problem for some of the, some of my customers, but it was a little, I mean, it wasn't a problem, but I kind of had wished, uh, when I originally designed the, the first one that the strap sit a little bit farther back on the battery. And so that's what I did here is moved it back a little bit. All right, so that sums up, um, I, think, I think I've covered most of the changes that, I, that comes to my mind right now. Um, another, another one that I will mention, of course, is the price. So um, this guy is gonna be cheaper than the current system. This is gonna be offered at $99. So it's going to come in only one version, the four millimeter version, as you see here, and it's 99 bucks. So I've been talking a lot about all of the changes between the new version and the uh, current version. Um, but one thing that we did not change, one thing that was, uh, is kind of the magic behind the 210R and helped it to become so popular is battery placement. All right. We were the first to come out with a system that properly places the battery between the line of, uh, of the props, okay? So the prop line, that's the axis where the thing is making its, uh, its maneuvers in flight, okay? And so you want as much mass as you can centered uh, between the line of the props. And so we did not change that at all. It's exactly the same as the old one. Um, so the way that this thing flies will feel the same. You're going to have a lighter machine, so it should fly better. Um, but just the, the general feel of this machine should be uh, the same as the current version. So that's it. Um, that's uh, the new version that's coming out. Um, they're being machined now, and we're going to put this guy up for, uh, for pre-order. And so you can make your, your purchase if you want. Go ahead and, and get in line to get one of these. Uh, we're doing a limited run on our first batch, so make sure to go ahead and, and make your purchase if it interests you. Anyways, that's it. So um, let me know if there's any questions. Stranger